Welcome back aboard Relativity Express, and thanks again for choosing Relativity. As you'll recall, during our last journey, we observed an experiment to measure the speed of light in an alternate universe. In this universe, an observer in a train measured the time it took for a light beam to go from a laser on the floor to a mirror on the ceiling and back down again. This was measured as 8 seconds. Another person outside the train measured the time it took for the same event. However, the train was moving at a speed of 0.6 meters per second, and so the light traveled a greater distance. In this case, it traveled 10 meters. We discovered that the time this person measured was 10 seconds. So, although the time intervals for the same event were different, the speed of light for this event was constant. Now let's take a look at a few additional implications of this. What we'll do is we're going to lay down some track. There we go. And we'll have a choo-choo train here with an observer right over here. The same observer as during our first trip. And then we'll have an observer outside the train right over here. Now remember, the time for this event was 8 seconds for the person in the train and the time was 10 seconds for the person outside of the train. The train was moving at a speed of 0 0.6 meters per second and the speed of light was 1 meter per second. Now, when we measure the distance that the train is going to move down the tracks from the perspective of the person that's outside of the train, the track is not moving relative to this person. So in this case, the person measuring the distance traveled on the track is in the proper reference frame. Remember, the proper reference frame is one in which there is no relative motion between what is being measured and the observer. So, that distance would be measured right over here. And the person inside of the train is also going to be observing the distance covered by the train. In this case, the person inside the train sees the world as if the train is standing still, but the track is moving toward this person at a speed of 0.6 meters per second. So here is the distance that will be measured by the person inside the train. Now let's take a look at what these calculations would look like. They're not very tough. Here we go. Here's the person that's going to be observing the train from the outside. The time interval is 10 seconds. The speed of the train as it moves down the track is 6 meters per second. So the distance is 6 meters. What about for the person inside the train? Well, the calculation is very similar, but there is a different answer. 8 seconds multiplied by the same speed. Remember, the speed of the track moving toward the train and the speed of the train moving down the track is 6 meters per second in each case. So what we get here is we get 4.8 meters. Now wait! 4.8 meters? The distance here is the same! Can it be that this is 6 meters and this is 4.8 meters? Which is right? The answer is they're both right. It all de depends on your reference frame. Wow! But wait, there's more! 
You might recall this equation here from our last trip. This was the equation for time dilation. You might imagine there's a similar equation for length contraction because that's what we got here. We got some length contraction. And here's that equation now. Wow! Now you also might recall that we calculated the denominator, the bottom part over here, from our previous trip as 0.8. That's right, it was 0.8. And you'll note that this part right over here, let me move it over there, you see it there? 1 minus v squared over c squared, that's the same deal that we got over here. So that means that, that 0.8 can easily be plugged in right over here. So if we plug in 0.8 right over here, what we get is we get 0.8 multiplied by the proper length. That's the length measured by the person that has no relative motion with respect to the track. That's this person right over here. And so 6 meters is the proper length. And what do we get for the contracted length? Why? 4.8 meters. How about that? Now let's explore this a bit further. We'll make some room for some further explorations here and what we'll be looking at is something called relative velocity in a relativistic world. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this fellow right over here and this fellow, well, we're going to have him spend some time elsewhere. But we're going to put another train here on this track. Here it comes. Woo -woo -woo -woo. Now, each of these trains is going to be moving with the same speed relative to the track. That speed is going to be 0.6 meters per second. There it is. I snagged the wrong thing with my cursor, but now we're cool. Okay, so this train over here is moving to the right, and this train over here is moving to the left. And the question is, this observer in the train would experience what relative velocity? In other words, how fast would the train over here on the right appear to be going toward this observer? Well, there's an equation for this, and here it is. And what this is, is this is the relative velocity here. So I want to first, before we go any further, make sure that there are no anxieties or fears whatsoever. We at Relativity would never, ever have two trains on the same track approaching each other. As we like to say at Relativity, the only good place for a head-on collision is in a particle accelerator. <laughs> yeah, that's what we say. Anywho, this is the equation for relativistic velocity. And L stands for the train on the left, and R stands for the train on the right. And this, of course, is the speed of light squared. So what we'll be doing is we'll be plugging in 0.6 over here for the left, for the right, and we'll see what we get. Now, you can't get a number that's going to be greater than the speed of light. You can't get anything greater than 1c. So that's what this denominator, the bottom part here, is for, to make sure you don't get anything bigger. The math is... Again, exceedingly easy, and there's the result. What we see is, we see that the relative velocity is going to be 0.88c. So you can't just add them up like you do at very slow speeds, because when you get close to the speed of light, which in this universe, you'll remember, is going to be 1 meter per second squared, then you get some interesting relativistic effects. Well, I'd like to thank you all for once again traveling with relativity. The current year on Earth is 2817. Good news, too. I don't see any apes, just large insectoids. <laughs>